just in case you come to Canada and you're not get used to their food you have to ask your employer when I first came to Canada I saw my employer uh, eating like a salad you know and I even asked them why are you eating uh, not a cooked food not cooked vegetable <laughs> Uh, how is everyone out there? My name is Sarah Buyukan and on today's video just to share you some information about what it's like to be a live-in nanny here in Canada. My kids is in the martial arts so I'm just waiting them so while I'm sitting here I'm yap yap yapping with you guys okay. So what I share with you is just based on my own life experience as a nanny before before I got my permanent resident. A live-in caregiver or live in nanny here in Canada is one way and the easiest way a pathway to become a permanent resident so you stay with me until the end of this video because I'm going to share you what are the duties and responsibilities of being a live in caregiver here in Canada or a live in nanny especially if you are one of the aspirant immigrants okay, to be a live in nanny here in Canada it's either you work eight hours to ten hours a day and it all depends on your contract between you and your employer so you are entitled to work eight hours to ten hours a day 40 hours per week and you are entitled for two days off so your days off it all depends on your employer's availability okay let's say you're in your contract you are working 7 a.m to 4 p.m okay so beyond that after 4 p.m you are entitled to have your off you can do your own errands you can go to your own room or if you want to go shopping after the working hours then you can go outside and do your own errands okay otherwise if your employer want you to extend more hours after the 4 p.m uh they have to pay you because that is considered overtime okay but then you know sometimes employer they will just ask you once in a month or twice in a month sometimes they might not pay you and sometimes you have to keep consideration for that right but if it is all the time you have to ask your your employer and you have the right to ask them and the employers know their responsibilities as an employer okay they knew they will pay you for the extra hours you work after the 4 p.m because some employer they took advantage on you learn how to talk don't just sip your mouth and yep 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 behind them no that's not good okay talk to them because especially when you are working like a live-in nanny you know uh, sometimes employer taking advantage on your time your work hours sometimes you're working longer hours and you have to remind them in your contract that this is my time blah 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 because some employers they took advantage for that the duties and responsibilities of being a live-in nanny here in Canada uh, it's all in your contract okay you have to know it's all in your contract so being a live-in nanny you either take care of small children uh, you drop them to school you pick them up to school a meal preparation give them a shower give them a bath uh, feed them so meal preparation it all depends on your employer too okay because uh, sometimes kids food is different to the employer right so if in case you are going to do your meal preparation and if you are not sure what is your employer's food you have to ask them if you are not sure what type of food you're going to prepare for them you have to ask them let them cook and then you have to see how they cook okay because for me that's how i did before because i'm not a good cook and oh my god i came from hong kong and different food chinese food people and then when you come here in western country and you know it's different <laughs> so, yeah. so if you are not very sure if you're not a good cook like me uh, go to the youtube and learn something like western food how to cook otherwise if you're not sure you have to let your employer uh, do it for you let them prepare and then you can watch how they do okay so anyway the food for the meal preparation for the children here in canada is very easy so you don't have to be nervous and don't worry about it. so driving is very important because some employers they want their nannies to know how to drive uh, they will let you just drive their children to go to their uh, evening activities okay most of the children here in canada Canada, they have their evening activities after their regular class Monday to Friday so most of the kids here they go hockey, hockey swimming uh, skating dancing lesson martial arts nanny here in Canada they always have their own private room okay the employer knew about that okay especially if they hire people from overseas you know in the immigration uh, requirements as an employer you need to provide your own live-in nanny or live-in caregiver uh, private room uh, it has to be furnished 
you know, the agreement for board and lodging. It's all in the immigration uh, requirements and you have to follow as an employer, you know. For the salary, it all depends on the private. Living nanny here in Canada, especially if you are in Quebec, because Quebec is only the province here in Canada that speak French, okay? And I believe uh, Quebec is still the old pathway for the live-in nanny, so they don't need to have IELTS, okay? And 72 units, I believe, is uh, okay for them to accept you to come here and work as a nanny. Otherwise, except uh, Quebec, you need to have IELTS and you need to submit your credentials here in Canada for them to assess your level of education. And that's the requirements, okay? That's the new requirements for the uh, nanny or caregivers here in Canada, except Quebec, okay? You are working as a living nanny to your employer and once you got your permanent resident and you want to, you know, you want to experience to work outside, right? Of course, that's our wish. And if in case you want to work another jobs, you have to ask your employer. It's no problem with that. The employer will understand, especially if you're a permanent resident, you are entitled to, you know, go to school if you want to upgrade whatever you finish in your country and uh, you want to continue your profession here and it's okay or if the employer is still need you they can keep you but you need to ask for a raise for your salary you ask your employer for the increase okay and if they won't give you some increase then there's a time you ask permission to them if you can find another job okay because of course you need money right this is my best advice for you too. If you have your own children or husband in back home, whatever country you are, you try to sponsor them here. You know, my best advice for you guys, you stay in your employer as a live-in nanny because you can save more money for that, okay? So before your family come here in Canada when their papers, their applications, everything is okay. And this is a time you have, you have your money, you save money, and then you can find an apartment to stay all together with your family when they arrive here in Canada. Otherwise, if by yourself, if I were you, you stay with your employer as a living nanny, you can save more money, especially uh, if your employer are very rich because some employer, uh, they deduct your board and lodging. Some employer, they won't let you pay the board and lodging it's all free you know so you are very lucky you can save more money for that okay some employers okay but not all employers okay. to be a live-in nanny here in canada is saving a lot of money especially if you are an uh, international student or you are a student or you know you want to save more money if i were you to be a live-in nanny is the very easy job because once you get used to your routine every day the children grew up with you the children love you you will end up like you're gonna uh you feel like they are your family okay but of course you have to remember that you are still a live-in nanny and you are not their family okay but some employers they consider you as their uh part of the family too but uh yeah but of course you as an employee you have to know your limitations right in canada employers are very good people okay because i got some questions from you guys like uh how was the employers in canada do they treated you good or you know i said yes of course they are very good people they know their rights and in Canada, you are safe. You are okay. If you have any more questions, just ask me because the more you ask questions from me, the more I have these ideas to share it to you guys and I make more videos. And don't forget to, to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, if you're an aspirant immigrant, uh, wants to work as a live-in caregiver or a live-in nanny here in Canada, uh, just go for it and don't give up because uh, for the new program for the caregiver or uh, live-in nanny here in Canada, they change now, no more live-in, okay, you have to stay live out. So it all depends on your employer now. It's either you, if they want to keep you as a live-in nanny to them or a live-in caregiver and it's okay, especially if you are, if you are single, you know. Question now is for the new program, for the pilot program for the caregiver or nanny here in Canada, when you do application to this uh, nanny or caregiver here in Canada, you have to apply in advance together with your permanent residence. And if you have your children and husband or your husband and wife, you have to include them in your own application. That's why those applications are take a little bit longer because, you know, you need to apply ahead for your permanent resident.
and uh, this new pilot program for the caregiver that was introduced 2019 is a very good program because you need, you either come as the applicant or you can bring with you your family at the same time uh, this is the question again what if i bring my family with me or, and my employer want us to stay as a living caregiver it, it's possible as long as the care, the employer provide a place for you to stay especially if your husband and your children with you right otherwise if the employer don't provide any room for you a place to live in their own home then of course you have to rent you know you s spend more money which is okay because you as a caregiver or a live or a nanny whatever your husband the immigration they provide a work open work permit visa okay so your husband is going to work any kind of job because open work permit visa then you have enough money to pay your rent and your food and everything okay i think uh my what time is it now oh it's 7 20. my daughter is finishing their uh evening activities 7 20 so so possible question that you might ask uh how about male caregiver or male live-in nannies in canada are they hiring live-in nannies of course if, especially if you are in canada and you are under work permit visa or you are under like a visitor visa or you are like student visa you want to find an employer it's easy for you to become a permanent resident try a live-in nanny even though you are a male like people with disabilities they prefer to hire a live-in caregiver or a live-in nanny when we are talking about caregiver uh, you either you taking care of elderly people with disabilities okay so live-in nanny mostly you taking care of small children with their family in their home okay oh, sometimes it's good when we have this type of experience as a nanny is because uh, that is a plus factor for you especially if you're applying to come here in Canada if you don't have any work experience as a living nanny or a living caregiver and you know if I'm the employer I would rather hire the thousands of applicants with their work experience especially you know it's very competitive you know those outside from canada like from other countries like uh, people work in israel as a caregiver those filipinos they cross country to come here in canada with their own work experience or in hong kong in taiwan korea saudi arabia something like that okay so if you are in philippines or in some other countries like in some part of african countries you better have to have at least a work experience so yeah it's good it's a plus factor for you if you're trying to apply for a job go to canadian website always canada.ca while i'm driving okay let me continue the topic about the living nanny here in canada okay hi mariah did you have fun today yeah i just pick her up from her evening activities so anyway uh let me continue about the living nanny so if you're a living nanny here in canada you are entitled for a uh, vacation okay so it has to be in your contract in your employer so uh, the vacation for one year vacation for at least some employer they give you 10 days some employer they might give you five days so it all depends on your employer okay and about the sick leave you have to ask your employer for that too okay because uh, sick leave means if you are sick you feel sick you don't want to work that day the employer has to pay you no work but they have to pay you okay so you are entitled for what else I have to share all your emails I receive it from you and sometimes I just have no time to answer you know I'm a mom of three I'm a day home provider and at the same time I'm a youtuber <laughs> too many things and I'm by myself okay so it's just I'm having fun sharing about life here in Canada ideas and everything information to you guys so sometimes I cannot answer to you but I read all your email to me okay as long as the right email yeah huh the what while we are talking about the living nanny might as well I can uh, just answer some of the questions if I remember now I'm driving <laughs> I forgot <laughs> Oh, yay, yay. Anyway, how is your hapkido, Mariah? It's good. It's good? Yeah. Okay, let me talk again, Mariah. Oh, I remember about uh, washing the clothes here for your employer, okay? 
most of the employer here in Canada they won't bother you to iron their clothes okay I never iron my clothes here in Canada <laughs> anyway but uh, most of the employer they don't bother you to iron their clothes you just fold them and or hang them and that's all some even employer they don't bother you to wash their clothes okay the most important for them is you focus the safety of their children and they don't really bother about the cooking okay Canadian foods are easy to prepare if we compare in our own Asian food you know for Canadian food it's easy you just throw them uh, throw the food in the oven you know and learn how to bake when I'm going to give you some story okay when I first came to Canada when I first came to Canada I saw my employer uh, eating like a salad you know and I even asked them why are you eating uh, not a cooked food not cooked vegetable <laughs> <laughs> that's how they eat like a salad right because uh, when I'm in Philippines we get used to cook like stir fry stir fry you know boil with soup and meat and chicken something like that when I went to Hong Kong uh, I never prepare a salad to my employer because I boiled vegetable to them and uh, yeah I boiled vegetable to my employer so when I came to Canada I saw them eating uh, just chicken and boiled potato and and <laughs> salad and I asked them why are you eating like that oh my goodness sake now I realize it's healthy food <laughs> it's embarrassing <laughs> but hey that's how I learned right so yeah so if you are not used to especially if you're eating rice every day three times a day when you come to Canada oh you will learn to eat all those uh, healthy foods <laughs> healthy foods <laughs> because uh, they don't apply it's not advisable to eat three times a day rice okay uh, but it's good to eat rice anyway so yeah so if you are not comfortable of their salad especially when you first came to Canada and their food is like salad or uh, <clears throat> potato they sell them to eat rice and they're eating carrots just carrots the uncooked carrots okay they just eat uh, uncooked carrots just in case you come to Canada and you're not get used to their food you have to ask your employer because uh, for me before my employer are very good people they ask me what type of food I want and so they can buy it for me so I told them rice and uh, chicken and pork I was like you know and like yeah so I cook my own food and I cook my employer food separate they are very good employer I remember they are awesome people and yeah so if you are not comfortable otherwise try their food okay and you will learn because uh, I love when I was living in Nani here in Canada I love it because uh, that's how I eat uh, healthy foods and I'm so sexy and skinny <laughs> skinny I'm just a size zero that time because uh, you know I'm eating healthy foods but then when I got my permanent resident I went and stay on my own I cook like Filipino food especially when my husband arrived here in Canada holy cow I eat like Filipino food almost every day gain weight cholesterol high cholesterol <laughs> bad rice <laughs> no I'm just kidding yeah that's how we eat but uh, we learn how to eat healthy foods once we arrive to Canada okay so anyway I'm arrived home safe bye and thank you for watching <laughs> just yep 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 video anyway I'll see you for my next video God bless you bye bye let's go Mariah